So Russia just got clapped. I know, I know, I'm a bit late to the party. But I just wanted to wait a bit and see what new information would come up. A couple days ago, a massive explosion was reported on the Russian airbase at Saki in Crimea. I mean, look at these pictures. I'm sure you've seen it, but here's a little before after. Before and after. I mean, just look at that. But most importantly, what caused it? An accident, a sabotage mission, or a missile strike, or something else? In reality, any of these scenarios make Russia look really bad. It's not as big as the loss of the Moskva, but it's certainly up there, you know? And then the Ukrainian MOD is trolling by denying any involvement in the explosions. Yeah, right. And the funniest thing is that the Russians came up with the exact same excuse as with the Moskva. An accident. It happened because ammunition exploded. No shit. It's as if they came up with something like that. The explosion was caused by the rapid expansion in volume associated with an extremely vigorous outward release of energy, usually with the generation of high temperatures and release of high pressure gases. Yeah, okay, okay, you're right. But what caused this sudden ignition of ammunition? Hi, and welcome to History Legends. Here are the latest news about the Russo-Ukrainian war. Here we cut the BS and talk about what the media doesn't tell you. As always, information changes by the hour, so if you have any new information, just comment it below. If you're new to this channel, make sure to check out my Ukraine playlist so you don't miss anything I've said in the past. As you know, some of my Ukraine videos have been targeted with limited or no ads. So make sure to support me on Patreon or PayPal to keep the show running. Thank you to everyone that has already helped and welcome to the headquarters. Saki Air Base Attack So let's start with geography. If you didn't know, the Saki Air Base is located right in the middle of Crimea, which means the Ukrainians could strike any target in this area. The Russians really don't like that. But let's take a look at what happened. I'm not an intel expert, but according to these satellite images, it doesn't look too good. We can see how the destruction is extensive. It's completely blown up. Now, some claim that four Sukhoi-30 were destroyed alongside five Sukhoi-24. Others put the losses at three Sukhoi-30, four Sukhoi-24, and one Sukhoi-27. All of them destroyed for a total of eight. Thing is, these are the ones that were completely destroyed, but a lot of other aircraft in the surrounding area were severely damaged. And nobody knows if they can even be repaired at this point. Now, some people claim that these aircraft were meant to be scrapped anyway. Is it really legit? I highly doubt it. So let's say that the Russians lost about eight or nine fighter jets. It's certainly a disaster for the Russians. But I also wanted to put things into perspective. A lot of Ukrainian fighter aircraft were also destroyed in the past day or two. As you can see on this map from DPA, shout out to Wiat. On the southern front alone, the Ukrainians lost five fighter jets. All of them shot down with a pilot inside. And there was another one in Donbass that makes six aircraft losses. You can always build new aircraft, but training new pilots takes time. So I don't know what happened to these Ukraine pilots. Let's hope they managed to get out alive. But yeah, regardless, the impact of the explosion on Russia is immense physically, but especially politically. First of all, there were images of thousands of tourists, Russian tourists, fleeing from this area back towards Russian territory through the Kerch Bridge. They witnessed dozens of explosions during 30 minutes with a huge mushroom cloud just kilometers away. Let's say it's the first time that they really experienced the war. And overall, it's bad press for this special military operation. Crimea was like this little brother that Russia absolutely wanted to protect. It's part of Russia. Now, if Ukraine can bomb it, it means they really bombed straight into Russian territory. A lot of Russians are mad. They want revenge. And some go as far as to say that Putin doesn't go far enough because they see this as an act of aggression from NATO. Was it an accident? I don't believe at all in this theory of a simple accident. Of course, the Moskva was also an accident and that the special military operation is going exactly according to plan. 
Anyway, next, perhaps a sabotage. Some Ukrainian officials have been quoted suggesting it may have been a sabotage by infiltrators. Julian Röpke, a German journalist from Bild, suggests that by looking at the craters, this could signal that the storage buildings were rigged with explosives and detonated remotely by Ukrainian special forces. Perhaps. Meanwhile, Rob Lee from Twitter points out that the Russian Black Sea Fleet's headquarters in the Crimea was reportedly hit by a loitering munition on July 31st. The drone must have been guided from a nearby team. If it worked two weeks ago, they could have replicated this, perhaps on a bigger scale, and it worked. And overall, all these scenarios are not as crazy as we might think. Between 2015 and 2017, a series of Ukrainian ammunition dumps were destroyed by Russian special forces, using small quadcopters to drop thermite grenades on them. But honestly, it's hard to imagine how a small group of commandos could even reach that place. Deep into Crimea, despite all the security and the FSB, with enough explosive material or even a loitering munition, and then carry out such a raid on a well-defended position in broad daylight and causing simultaneous explosions with almost identical craters. To me, it sounds like a Call of Duty Modern Warfare mission. I mean, technically, it is possible. I just highly doubt it. There's so many parts of the plan that have to work back to back. And I think the sabotage theory was pushed out into the public just to make the Russians even more paranoid. That Ukrainian saboteurs could be anywhere. And perhaps for the Russians to start suspecting a lot more civilians in the population of Crimea. I almost forgot about the High Mars. Many other analysts believe it was a missile strike that caused the explosion, or rather multiple missile strikes. This makes Russia look bad because that would mean that the Russian air defense missile system, the S-400, failed to protect the base. Pretty embarrassing and bad for business. Now people believe it was specifically American attackums launched from High Mars Attackum stands for Army Tactical Missile System. Problem is that the US did not officially announce that they had sent these to Ukraine. Anyway, several open source intelligence accounts on Twitter, the Brosint community, cited the large craters as well as the accuracy and the 200 kilometer distance from Ukrainian held territory as evidence for an attackum strike. Although the US has not officially provided Ukraine with attackums, but it's possible that they could have been supplied without an announcement. Let's first check if the distance distance works. The range of the attackums is 300 kilometers. That means from all over the Ukrainian held territory on the southern front, HIMARS would have been in range of the Saki airbase. Okay, so I'm checking really quick from Odessa, it's 262 kilometers, 240 kilometers from Mykolaiv, and 279 kilometers from Nikopol. Now a lot of people wonder why there's no video evidence of a missile strike. But apparently the Atakums is a ballistic missile that flies into an object almost vertically at high speed, meaning it's hard to catch them on cam. At the same time, a Ukrainian official told the New York Times that the weapons involved were exclusively of Ukrainian manufacture. Atakums are American, so that would mean that it wasn't that. Which could mean that it was a mobile ballistic missile called Grom-2, which Ukraine has been working on for some time. But again, that raises many questions. How could it have been developed to operational status so quickly? Or what about the lack of suitable GPS guidance systems for this missile? Others suggest it was a Neptune anti-ship cruise missile, a weapon developed by Ukraine, the same type that sank the Moskva back in April, or rather that transformed it into a submarine. Although the missiles were meant to hit targets on sea, it is possible that the missiles could have used GPS coordinates to hit land targets. Of course, they could all be BS since the US has not made an official announcement that they have provided the Takens. Ukrainians could have said, yeah, it's Ukrainian weapons. Could be BS. Now, military analyst Konrad Muzika told the Moscow Times, if it was a large missile, you would expect the Russians to have attempted to strike it down. But we have seen no missile trails in the sky and no evidence that air defense was activated. This goes hand in hand with what other people have said. It could have been an AGM-88 HARM air-to-surface missile. The acronym HARM stands for High Speed Anti-Radiation Missile. It weighs around 360 kilograms and carries a fragmentation type warhead that is optimized for radar targets. 
It also has an anti-radar homing seeker broadband, RF antenna and receiver, and a solid-state digital processor. In other words, it's an anti-radar missile that's supposed to jam or punch a hole in enemy air defense. And this could be confirmed because allegedly the Russians have found fragments of an AGM-88 harm after it was struck by a Russian surface-to-air missile. It's nothing new, Americans already used similar missiles during the Vietnam War. They needed it because in 1965, the Soviets supplied the North Vietnamese with some batteries that were obliterating American pilots. So the Americans came up with the Wild Weasel, whose mission was to precede the strike flights and clear the target area of radar-guided surface-to-air missile threats. Thing is, the AGM-88 has a range of about 100 to 150 kilometers. I know it's an air-to-surface missile, but it wouldn't have been possible to fire it from Ukrainian-held territory which makes the option of a ground-based launcher for the AGM-88 not possible. And on top of that, it's not designated to be used on Soviet or Russian-designed aircraft. But it's possible that the Ukrainian Air Force used modified existing MiG-29 or Sukhoi-27 fighters to accommodate this anti-radar missile, which could explain what Ukraine said, exclusively Ukrainian manufacture almost exclusively. But again, the problem of this theory is that we know that the Russians are able to shoot down Ukrainian aircraft, a lot of them. How come one or more Ukrainian aircraft managed to enter Russian airspace to fire these anti-radar missiles without being shot down? You have to be really into the Russian airspace. 150 kilometers is nothing. So yeah, it's really confusing. I don't know what to say. <laughs> And who knows, perhaps just like with the Moskva, you had Ukrainian drones divert the attention of Russian radars. But all this leads me to believe that it was a combination of multiple things. Here's a possible scenario. You had a Ukrainian aircraft or multiple Ukrainian aircraft that at the same time fired multiple anti-radar AGM-88 harm missiles to punch a hole in the airbase's entire air defense system. Perhaps this could have been coupled with local commandos on the ground that could have targeted or mapped out the positions of the radars. Now with the radars out, this opens a small jamming window and this window could be used to strike with multiple attack missiles or even modified Neptunes. You get the point. As you can imagine, such an operation requires a lot of coordination. Of course, this is only a theory. Let me know in the comment section what you thought caused this massive explosion. The important thing I want to know is whether this attack was just a lucky stunt or something that Ukraine can reproduce and use to have an advantage on the Russian Air Force or at least to equalize the battlefield. And this without risking the lives of their pilots that they don't have that many of. And the other thing is that you can bet that the Russians will seriously investigate what happened to make sure that this never happens again. Anyway, let me know in the comment section what you thought of my analysis. If you're new to this channel, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, make sure to check out my PayPal or Patreon. The link is in the description below.